Kubor Nagashlem Jung Nong San Hima. Katanat Social Welfare Jung Kasor Karjala, Mentaka Sni Kasantrik Unok Pra Arajar at Pulai. Kalapanong yaka program DREAM, kabade yaka program halor ka jingte lakam, yaka jingjale utro. Lapanong yaka nika program ha ususo tam auditorium, ha kaba umentri rangba ukonet ki sangma, ula long kum ukong san, but uba poling do, ubade umentri katanat social welfare, ula long kum usumbut kong san. Ha ka nika sni la don lang ruki opisan, nikslem trekam of herba pair, u DGP ka jalao Dr. L. R. Bishnoi, but kiwi kiwi. Hakani ke sengi, haba ajing keren u menteri rang ba ula pen pao ke jing sengok tenat ba ula don bentah hakani ke sengi. Pat kum juk ru ban pli ya ke BUILD la ni ke bringing unity and local against drugs. Kabadai halor, ban rat ding kong ya ke jing kerni ya u drug. U menteri rang ba ula pen pao da ke baong baki kuan ki kiti kem syak betin denti haka por ke babiang. Bat kan ni ya ke day ke wain ki dao jam ke jing kerni ya u drug. Haka juk ke por ula ke doru ya ke jing don ki jat jing ya lekai ki jing ruai jing put. Bat ki kam ba seng hi da la dia. Iba ka sorkar ka bon ra sya ki kuhun samla ka jela. Bat gini ki dey ki laat ban yada ya ki na ka jing pendan kam ya utrok. Menteri rang ba ula pentip ru ba ka program CM Elevate kan don ya ka jaka ban bu. Na ka menta ki ba kwa ban iit no ya utrok. Bat na ka menta ki tu ki ba seng kam la dia ki bila kuhut na ka jing pendan kam ya utrok. Na luar ka tau menteri rang ba ula ong ru ba ka projek DREAM ka dey ka baya sno bat ka Megalia Games. Bat kum ta ki ni ki no ya lek kai na ka jela. Kini ban mi isya kamat ban keren halor udrak. Menteri rang bau lah keren ru halor ke jing jelai udrak haka jela. Bat kumno kini kibri kibalang ngop. Kini ban sengap iki jing hikai kibaki yo. U menteri rang bau lah ai tiru ya ke pisah ke bahan riu lak tingka sya ke maulai dor bar. Halor ke sien jam bat ke jing tre sitom ban bu. Ya ke jaka sumar na kementah kibalang ngop. Lani kerni ya udrak. Na kali yang u menteri suarkar ba poling do. Ula ong ba ke suarkar ke yai tre sitom ban pentik na. Ban rat ding kong ya ke jing pendan kam kibri ya udrak haka jela. Ula ay kubley ru iki seng bahalang ki nongkit kam niyam, ki dor bar shnong ki bayi snok ki tilang man nyerap, man tek la kam ya ke jingdan udrok hapo ke jela. To be part of this very very important program of the social welfare department called DREAM and launching the BUILD forum and signing of the accord today, I take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this very, very important program. I will take a few moments to become a professor, I should say, uh, and not be a political or a politician giving a speech, because I want you to understand what it is that we are trying to do. And I strongly feel that one must understand the larger picture and goal of what is it that we are trying to do. And I'll be very brief. I'll be very brief, but I need to explain what policy making and how we are approaching governance in this MDA government that is now running in its fifth year and touching the sixth year. First of all, we need to differentiate and understand what kind of an economic model that we have. I have spoken about this in different forums, but I would like to share with you today about it because I feel you need to understand it. And I will build upon it. Meghalaya traditionally has been an economy, what we all call in economics, as an extractive economy. An extractive economy is an economy that works based on extracting and using its resources. We sell our resources and we grow our economy. It is not sustainable in nature. And hence, the world across and countries across are moving towards what we call a regenerative economy where we allow our resources to regenerate and we don't depend on our extractive resources to build our economy. Very complicated. I won't go into details about the theory part of it, but just the concept. But when we talk of a regenerative economy, the crux at what makes an economy a regenerative economy is precisely what Bapal had just mentioned to you. Time is our greatest resource. We all know that. 
And that's the reason why I always come on time for any program. Because I believe that not only am I wasting my time, but I'm wasting your time if I'm late. And it's not fair for me to allow you to lose the greatest resource that we all have, which is time. But apart from this greatest resource of time, one of the more important resources for any nation is its youth. So no matter what resource we have, whether it's coal or limestone, these are all extractive economies and they will perish in days and years to come. And hence, it is only our youth. And that's why Israel is a great model. Singapore is a great model of economies which have been able to regenerate basing their policy on the youth, which is, as I said, one of the greatest resources we have. So having said that, what are we trying to do out here? What we as a government are trying to do is take care of this greatest resource that we have. And that's the reason why in the past six years, our policies have been broken up into two, three multiple sectors or you can say, you know, divisions or systems that we try to create. The first is, we have what we call a stakeholder approach. It's not about drug abuse alone. It's not about entrepreneurship alone. It's not about music alone. It's not about education alone. It is about the youth at the center of our policy on this stakeholder approach. And the stakeholder is the youth and how do we put in different aspects of the youth to have a more holistic policy to push what is important for our youth. So if I'm not losing you out here, what I'm trying to say is, no schemes or programs can work in silos. If a government has to have a successful approach or successful implementation of any kind of a vision that they have, you need to go for a stakeholder approach. The women in our community, what do we do to have different programs around our women folk? Whether it is health related, whether it is economic activity related, whether it's social issues related, whether it's safety related, we need to understand the entire gamut of things so that we are able to actually have an impact on what we're trying to do. So bringing you back to the youth, we need to have a stakeholder approach. And hence, if you look at the last six years, I know you will look at different programs happening here and there, you know, must be thinking, why is this government doing this music program and the sports program? Well, I want to tell you, they are all connected. Everything revolves around our youngsters, our, one of our greatest resources that we have in order to be a regenerative economy. And since it is all a part of our policy making, we realize that we need to realize that the children have to be guided at the right time of their life and hence a life cycle approach as we call it. What do we do for a kid when they are one years old? What about the problem of an adolescent, a girl or a boy who's about to touch their teenage but we miss out that period when they are actually adolescents. We don't guide them. Maybe that is one of the most important points where we have issues of drugs today. What about the time frame where the child is actually, you know, in terms of the mental capacity growing the most, which is between the age of one and eight, the early childhood phase? What do we do as a government to invest in them at the right time? What happens to the kid when the child is in the teen age and then ready to enter the workforce? This is all in our minds as we create policies and programs for you. So for the youth, for example, why are we having the grassroots music program? Well, it's 
one part that I love music and so do all of you. But it's a talent that we have. And we realized that if we allow the youth to do what they love to do, maybe they won't do the things that are bad for them. And hence this grassroots music program that supports maybe close to 3,000 artists directly and another 10, 15,000 kids around them is actually allowing kids to be busy, is allowing kids to really do what they love to do and maybe hopefully stay away from the wrong things like drugs. And hence programs like why are we having Yes Megalai program where we are encouraging all the youth groups to have different kind of programs? We will support you. Almost 3,000 groups have applied for Yes Megalai program. We have supported them with funds up to 1 lakh rupees to have sports activity, to have music activity, to have social activities. It's all part of a bigger plan. Why do we have the CM Elevate and the Prime program? Because the livelihood missions are important for our kids. Once they have a sense of purpose in their lives, once they know what they want to do, and once they have a vision and a goal, well, they will be more focused and work towards it. Let's allow them to do that. Let's create the opportunities for our youth to do that. And while we're doing all of these things, we realize that, yes, there are these social problems that we have. And hence, what we're doing today, the dream project that we have, it just doesn't come out just out of nowhere. It's a part of a larger policy around the youth that we have in our state, apart from many other policies. And I thought that the state and the people, and especially people sitting here, should understand what we are trying to do. And while we do all of this, we have also realized one simple fact that every state is unique. No state is same or have similar social structures. For us, we have realized through many, many situations, and I'm very, very thankful to everybody for that, is that Meghalaya is a very strong community-based system. Our community leaders play a crucial role in all different social aspects of our lives. I remember those difficult times during COVID when we had huge challenges. And I want to share and tell you that if it, if it was not for our community leaders and their support at the grassroots level, the challenges would have been much more difficult. We would not have been able to do the kind of things we were able to at least do to some extent. I'm not saying everything went perfect because it was a huge challenge. But if it was not for the community leaders, I'll tell you today, and I said it before also, it would have been very difficult. And hence, in every aspect of what the government is doing today, we have community participation. We are one of the first few states in the country today to have what we call village health councils. We have a village health council in every 6,800 plus villages in our state. They report to us every month. There is an SOP and a manual based on which they have meetings every month in the village explaining to the villagers what kind of health measures and preventive measures they should take in order to be more healthy. This is all community-based work that we're doing. We have community-based programs for environmental issues also. We have community-based programs for water resources also. So on and so forth. So hence what I'm trying to tell you, and I'll now cut short my speech and come to why we are all here. Just, But I thought that you need to understand what goes on in my mind and in the other policy-making decisions that we do and how we approach things and why things are much different for us compared to say uh, other governments or many years back maybe or other state governments where departments focus on schemes, departments focus on programs, departments program on uh, UCs, 
Governments cannot work now only on schemes. You cannot work only on UCs. You cannot work only on reports that have been submitted. There must be a sense of purpose behind what you are trying to do. We need to focus on that purpose. What is it we are trying to achieve? And how will these different programs and schemes help us achieve that goal? That is the difference in the kind of governance that we are trying to do today. And therefore, with all of that thought process, this dream project is one part of the greater picture that we're trying to create for the youth, but a very important part. I really thank our uh, DGP. I wish he had spoken more. In fact, somebody sent a slip to him saying that you know, time is running out. And he looked at me and he said, sir, I'm sorry. I said, I didn't send the slip. Don't blame me. So, you know, I get blamed for everything. So, so I said, DGP, now you're also blaming me for this. I said, I didn't send that slip. So I want to clarify that to all of you that I did not stop him because I was really enjoying his speech. The way he spoke about facts and figures and numbers, it really, you know, uh, it was like a you know, wake up kind of uh, call for me in one way. Though I have half the figures he's already mentioned, but he mentioned more today about the different numbers, the fact that how the growth uh, in the kind of, um, you know, the uh, arrests that have been taking place, the seizures that have been taking place. Uh, so we were really enjoying that and therefore, we realize the kind of gravity of the problem that we're facing today. And hence, if you look, we have our health minister here, we have our social welfare minister here, we have the police department here. We all need to work together as a government. But more importantly, we need to work with the community. And we need to work with the religious groups. We need to work with the people, as was mentioned by one of our friends, who had given a testimony and really spoken out his heart. I appreciate it. Because I keep telling people, the first thing if you want to solve a problem is number one, you should have the right mindset. Because if you don't have the right mindset, you won't be able to do anything. So have the right mindset. Second most important thing you should know when you are trying to tackle a problem is you have to know the facts and accept those facts. If you don't accept those facts and you try to push them aside, and, and, and believe that it's not there, the problem, then I guess you'll never be able to solve the issue. So we need to be very clear, black and white, on what are the problems and resolve them. So I urge the team from social welfare, let this program not be too rigid. Let's be flexible in one way or the other to accommodate the different kind of inputs that we get, learn from those inputs, adapt to it, and accordingly change our strategy if required, I think it's so important because we're dealing with human beings out here and we're dealing with sensitive situations. We're dealing with people who have been through a lot of emotional stress and physical stress and psychological stress. So how do we make sure that we're able to come out of this? Uh, all the departments, because we need the police force to be able to be firm and stop or at least reduce the kind of inflow that's coming in and arrest the people who are responsible for bringing these up substances here. We need the health department to ensure that we give all the health support, social welfare to be the nodal agency to really push this, the aspects and the government as, to, as a whole to work along with the community, along with all of you to make this successful. So that's really what the background of what we're trying to do here. I'm sorry I also took a lot of time, but I thought that uh, this is a very, very important moment and uh, one needs to understand the larger goal. Uh, today, what we did with the Maulai town, uh, Dorbar, uh, is a, a program that, uh, in fact, they had approached me and they'd said that they're planning to do this. And this was right when we were finalizing the dream project. And I told them, you immediately come, we're going to support you. So what we did for the Maulai uh, town, uh, Dorbar, is exactly one of the purposes of the dream project, is to facilitate to financially help different groups, different organizations, different Rambashnongs or the Dorbars who wish to do these programs and government will support you. We will finance different programs. The different NGOs who are already doing a great job, I must take this opportunity to thank you for your dedication and your commitment and the kind of difference that you've made in the individual lives of our youngsters. We are there to work with you and support you. 
the different religious organizations who are doing everything in their capacity at different levels. How can we now collaborate and push it further and work together to ensure that we are able to achieve goals and the government will be there to finance, to back you up and to support you. I'm not saying that we can give all the money that's required. We need to obviously be practical and prudent in the way we spend our money. But obviously, as I said, when earlier there was no you know, mechanism or a system or a policy, at least today we have some shape to a policy. And now we will just move forward, adapt, as I said, to improve things. And hopefully we'll be able to come out with a much better model as we go along. There will be challenges. There will be problems. There will be difficulties we face. But as mentioned earlier by our social welfare minister and others who spoke before me, that if we are together, if we work together, there is no difficulty or challenge that we will not be able to overcome. It may take time. It may take time. But with the right mind, with the right approach, with good teamwork, we will be able to reach our dream of having a drug-free Meghalaya. And we hope that we'll be able to achieve these goals. While I do that, also I want to share with you that, you know, we're going to have the Meghalaya Games coming up. So athletes who are going to perform, or who are going to compete there. To also talk about our indigenous food, for example. So what is healthy for us that grows here? Let us promote that. The vegetables or the fruits that we have. Apart from that, the dream program will be connected to Meghalaya Games. So I would want that each athlete when they go, they should become our ambassadors for drug-free Meghalaya. So let the sports persons talk about drugs and how we should stay away from it, but at the same time how we should be you know, sympathetic and empathetic towards individuals who are going through these difficulties. I would want Meghalaya Games to be also part, or dream project to be part of the Meghalaya Games, where it will be great and it will be something that should continue, because as you know, Meghalaya Games will happen every year. So this time it's happening and you'll be surprised that in the last 17 years it's happened only three times, twice in the last five years and once 17 years back. And so now this is the third time, but now from now on we're going to have it every year. So now it's in this year it's in Tura, maybe next time it might be in Nongstoin or in Jawai, we haven't decided yet. So this is another big thing that we'll be doing. Apart from that, I've also decided that a big program called See and Elevate is an entrepreneurship program that we've started, where 20,000 entrepreneurs will be given financial support and subsidy to start their own businesses. I'll be, I'm happy to inform all of you that already for this year, 20,000 was our target for three years, but within two months, we have received 21,000 applications for See and Elevate already, within the first year itself. So it's a huge response and I'm very happy. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is that we will be keeping certain percentage of the CM Elevate program for our different groups that are there, whether it's the differently or specially abled group. We will be giving special uh, you know, quota for our uh, specially abled uh, youth who are there to start their businesses. Whether it is our youths who have gone through the challenges of uh, drug abuse and have come out of it now, we would like to promote them and support them in by giving them support in CN Elevate and keep a, a certain amount specifically for our youth who would then open up their businesses and show an example to others also and take it forward. So like that, we, will be, we would want our youths who have been, uh, you know, as I said, gone through these different stages and different difficulties of drug abuse we want to tell you that you are part of our policy, you are part of our program, you are part of what we want to do for our youth, you are our youth. And therefore, we want you to be participating in Yes Meghalaya, we want you to be participating in the grassroots music program, we want you to participate in CM Elevate program. So, I hope that we will be able to touch all these lives through these different programs that we are doing. So, uh, friends, I close. We have just signed an accord and as you can see this accord is an accord with a difference you've heard of 
Assam Accord, Mizoram Accord, Nagaland Accord. These accords have all been signed between two conflicting parties or groups. But here, today's accord has been signed and is being signed by people who have come together to dream together, to share this ideal of turning Meghalaya into the dream world that it can become and take it away from the nightmare it is sought to be pushed into. So friends, when I first uh, joined the cabinet, I was asked to describe it and I said it's a dream team. Little knowing that I would then be asked to head social welfare department with dream mission. When we speak of dreams, there are two facets and two aspects of dreams. One are dreams that send us into a state of slumber. But the dream, the other facet, is the dream that keeps us awake. And today, dream mission has kept us awake on our toes and trying our very best to deliver. I seek the support of each one of you it's very easy to point fingers. It is more difficult for those fingers to come together and unite and hand in hand, we take the stream forward. When we heard of Martin Luther King and his fiery speech, I have a dream and then over the years, we hear of Abba and the pop number, I have a dream. Those lines go, I have a dream, a song to sing. I have a dream, I cross the street, I cross the stream, I have a dream. In our case, the challenge before Meghalaya is not just crossing a stream. We have to cross very high mountains, sail across oceans, navigate across difficult problems. Geologically, Meghalaya falls under a seismic belt. But as you heard from the DGP, geographically, we are also in another seismic belt, the Golden Triangle. So the challenges are tough, but then there's a saying that when the tough gets when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And that's our motto, our aim as a government. Today, I acknowledge that with the active support of the Chief Minister, we have been able to proactively pursue this dream of ours. And as you can make out from the statistics that were shared, we are doing our very best to put our best foot forward in ensuring that we do eliminate drugs from Meghalaya as a state and as a society. We have been having a number of con confabulations with our faith leaders, Dorbash Nongs, NGOs, and today I see your constant enduring support because we need to make sure that we are in a position to make Meghalaya drug free at the earliest. If you are to talk of building for the next 50 years, we can build all weather roads. But if we are to talk of building the next 50 generations, we have to build up our youngsters and lead them in the right way, the right path. We are committed to that path. As you can see, Maulai Taman Dorbar is one of the Dorbars that have come forward. And the moment you take one step, 
the government is ready to take 10 steps to reach out to you. Because we need to ensure that we build a society where we create assets, not only through footpaths, bridges and roads, but our greatest assets, our strength, are our human beings. This is what Golda Meir had said at one point of time when she was Prime Minister of Israel. She was asked, what do you have as your assets? She said, talk of mineral deposits, we have none. Talk of natural wealth, we have none. Talk of agriculture, what third of our country is desert. But we do have a strength. That strength is our young people. So that is the dream we have envisioned. That is a dream we will uphold. And as I shared this thought yesterday, amongst the definitely able, let me say it before you today, in an audience which is mostly we have, we're not differently able, we have the best, we have our entire body and uh, various organs working in perfect tandem. It's very important that we not only have eyesight, but also have a vision. We not only have feet, but we also walk towards noble goals. We only not have hands, but also let those hands heal and touch somebody's life.